Okay. So next thing we're going to be talking about is MOS scores, and you've probably seen this a lot, or you know, we get a lot of questions on MOS scores and what what should customers be expecting the MOS scores to be. So MOS score or mean opinion score is an industry standard scoring for for calls. The goal is obviously to have you know have as high as high a quality a call as possible. The industry pretty much says a 4.0 is, is what's considered a good call. So you should be trying to get above a 4.0. So in this graph, you can see that for the most part, most of our calls are, are above 4.0. Um, there are many reasons calls can be scored lower. Lost IP packets due to network connectivity loss. Packet delays due to network congestion. DTMF issue, issues, sometimes we'll get it with the SIP trunks. That could be caused with low volume or high volume. Sometimes if, a, if there's too much volume on a DTMF will cause issues. Jitter. Uh, Jitter is a big one where the system will show delays on a, an average delays on a packet. If the, if the packets come in too high, then short system will just discard those packets. It doesn't mean that the call quality is going to be bad. It, it can discard a certain, certain percentage of packets on a call and still maintain good call quality. And I'll actually show that here in a little bit, that there is a, a little bit of leeway with your MOS scores. You can have one section that's you know part of the call that wasn't very good, and the overall score of the call will still be good. So call quality. So MOS scores tied directly to call quality. So have you ever wanted to know how many calls your system receives in a day. Well, you can run reports, but it's not, you know, it's not very easy to get. So using this, I could select a seven or a 30 day view and look at the number of calls that we're receiving, you know, in the system. So this is a seven day view and you, you select those one hour to, to 30 days in the top drop down of the dashboard. This is a drop down you can select one hour anywhere up to 30 days and that's what it'll refresh that the screen live for you once you select that. So I selected you know, a seven day here is that. Chris just selected the the uh, the bar graph that was on the previous page to drill into the individual calls, right, Chris? Correct. Yeah. So I took the dashboard and I just screened shot out of the the call volume piece and, and dropped it onto a separate slide so I could make it a little bit bigger than than it was in the in the, the dashboard view. So if I hover my mouse over one of the green bars for a day. I'll see the number of external and internal call, incoming and outgoing external calls in the system. So you, in this case, you can see 389 were for on, on a 4-3 to, to May 1st. If I wanted to see details on those calls, I simply click on the green part of the bar, and you can see on the bottom half of my screen, it shows the call quality for those days. You can see the date and the time, the location, the, tr the switch that was handling that call. You get all the different information you need to, you need to know on those calls. If I wanted to look at one of those particular calls, I simply double click on the call and it will take me to the stats. I'm going to show you that on bad call here, here in a second if you were to double click and see the details on those calls. As you'll see on the call quality, there's a little symbol next to each call and it's either green or yellow or you'll see red in a minute. Obviously green means it was a great call. Yellow is a warning to say, hey, there was, there was something that was a little bit you know, unexpected on the call, but it was still overall, it was, it was still a good call. It did, you know, nothing failed. Uh, on any of the stats. Okay, so this is uh, the call quality for bad calls. So we were looking at the good calls before. If the same thing, if I hover over a green you know, section, it's going to tell me number of calls. Well, down at the very bottom, you'll see a little red bar, and this the red bar will change depending on how many bad calls you have. So if I simply take my mouse and I hover over the the red part of the graph, it'll tell me exactly how many bad calls occur that day. So if I simply click on that red section on the bottom, it'll give me a summary of all the bad calls, which you see on the very bottom, which is the call quality for the day. Once that screen appears, you'll see you know all the calls had at least one issue. It doesn't mean that it was a, a, a bad call. It just means they had one particular area that failed the call quality you know standards. So in this example, I'm going to click on the very top one. So I can give you more detail. We can actually look at the breakdown of an actual call. Okay, so this is the call here. So you can see that this call, the, the call details show that this call was between Mike Bartz and our Broadvox SIP PRI. I can also see that the call started at 4:38 p.m. 
and ended at 4.42 p.m. So it wasn't a, a long call. I could also see that the codec was the PCMU 8000. Most of you probably know that codec is G711. It's the industry standard. Most of your telephone carriers recommend that codec and they use that codec in their own environment. So that is the preferred codec you know, that, we, that we recommend. You can also see that it has an MOS score of 4.4. So it's still above the 4, so it's still rated a good quality call overall. Except for you know, the one category where you can see the red, which we'll get down to. Below the MOS score, you can see packet loss. So we're not seeing any packet loss on the call, which is, which is obviously good. The next thing below that is our jitter. So like we talked about before, jitter is delay above the expected delay of a call. So if I were to look at the IP path trace, which is a little link on the top, and I didn't screenshot, it would tell us what the expected delay is between the phone and the short tail switch, the short tail switch and a PRI. And it's usually about 30 milliseconds. So what the jitter looks at is those delays, and anything beyond that, it, it logs as a little bit more jitter than expected. The system is, is really capable of handling jitter up to two to 300 milliseconds. So there's a lot of leeway there to not have to drop packets out of a call and discard them. The very bottom you'll see is the delay, and that's where on this particular call it flagged an error. For packet delay, anything over 200 milliseconds, it's really going to it's going to discard it because that packet didn't make it round trip in the time it was supposed to. Usually that be, that comes with network congestion or too many hops across the MPLS. In this case. I know that the phone that the user is logged into right now is actually this home office. So the home office phone connects across an SSL VPN to our colo, which then connects to a short gear 50. That 50 is connected to the same network as our, our T1K. So that's where the call came in. So if I were to pull a packet capture on this, I'd actually be able to see where the delay occurred. And 90% of these calls occur between the phone and our short gear 50 when they cross the SSL VPN. So it's a pretty common issue we see with SSL VPNs. And in most cases, the customer wasn't even aware that there was issues on the call because we didn't actually discard any packets for packet loss or there wasn't a ton of jitter that we had to discard a lot of packets. So the customer in most cases doesn't realize that there was anything wrong with this call.